Welcome to Kuwait. As one of the world's heavyweights in the energy sector, this Gulf country for decades didn't need to worry much about its economy. Flush with oil money and enjoying a high per capita income, the private sector here was mostly an afterthought. But the decline in oil prices has caused a major rethink. A strategic plan for future development called National Vision 2035, or New Kuwait, aims to reduce the size of the public sector while growing private investment and build a more sustainable, diversified economy for the future. We're here to reveal the plans for the new Kuwait and to see how this overarching vision is being carried out on the ground. Join me as we go on location. Kuwait is a small but wealthy country with a population of 4.3 million people. It shares borders with Iraq and Saudi Arabia and has 500 kilometers of Gulf coastline. With a long history as a trading nation and a location along both old and new trading routes connecting east and west, the country is looking to both return to past glory and to set itself up for a brighter future. The espoused pillars of the new Kuwait are effective public administration, creative human capital, a sustainable diversified economy, strong infrastructure, high quality health care, a sustainable living environment, and good international positioning. On the economic side, the government is trying to diversify the economy and reduce dependency by creating other forms of income. The sustainability of Kuwait, I think, sustainability of you know, the physical sustainability, the economy, economic sustainability, uh, there is no doubt on our sovereign sustainability with the strong political uh, system we have and with the, uh, the experience we've seen. We've been to many crises, among them one of the largest crises a man would think of, which is an invasion, a total invasion. Yet we managed to come back uh, stronger and using our uh, political regime to build up stronger institutions on that. Of course, Kuwait's economic transformation starts with the all-important oil sector, though it doesn't end there. The primary economic activities of the old Kuwait were pearl fishing and trading. The modern Kuwaiti economy was fueled by the development of oil in the 1950s. This led to large government coffers and a bloated public sector. The lucrative petroleum industries made for a comfortable life for many, but there's now a recognition that this economic model has run its course. Kuwait is rich in oil, you see. And because of that thing, it has a lot of opportunities in that. But we have started about eight years ago with a very big project with Dow Chemicals. And this is called Equate. Uh, it's one of the largest companies in the production of methanol and other byproducts from the oil. And it had an excellent success. We are trying to, to encourage foreign companies really to come and participate with Kuwaitis or even of their own to have some economic establishment here and to produce such things. Kuwait is not giving up on the oil sector by any means, but it does intend to diversify its range of activities across the full spectrum of energy, both traditional and alternative sources, and to tilt its economy towards a wider range of sectors. The country wants to present itself as a secure and open market that welcomes inward direct investment to complement its large volumes of outward investment led by its sovereign wealth fund and the global presence of the Kuwait Petroleum Corporation and its affiliates. FDIs play a major role of, of other forms of income to diversify the economies. This is why FDI is very crucial for the vision and this is why that you've been seeing lately in the past few years a lot of laws, uh, new economic laws have been passed or a lot of uh, old economic laws have been updated to, to cater to the attracting uh, FDIs and uh, encouraging them to invest in Kuwait. In aid of attracting more FDI, the government has carried out a number of reforms in recent years, including the creation of the Kuwait Direct Investment Promotion Authority, which facilitates investment and assists investors. Among the more significant legislative changes, foreign investors are now allowed up to 100% full ownership anywhere in Kuwait, not just in special economic zones. Incentives such as tax holidays of up to 10 years and customs exemptions were also introduced, along with freedom to transfer money freely in and outside of Kuwait. 
Kuwait now ranks 96th in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business report, higher than the Middle East average, and has an economic freedom score of 62.2, making it the fifth freest in the region. We are trying to tackle the business environment in Kuwait, the bureaucracies and the procedures and, and so on, and, and we've been successfully so far by introducing the uh, business environment reform agenda. There's a lot of changes been happening on the ground, and investors, uh, we would like the investors to like take a look, closer look at all the investment opportunities available and all the changes going on in Kuwait and benefit from those changes, not only to cater to the Kuwaiti market, but use Kuwait as a hub and a springboard to reach to the uh, regional market as well. Though more remains to be done, these initial changes have captured some notice already. It's, uh, it's a new day for Kuwait. As I look around the region, there are some challenges facing some of the other countries, but Kuwait is bringing security, stability, human resources and cash, and all of those things make for a very attractive market for American companies. Investors are being invited to partner in projects and sectors that include information and communications technology, oil and gas, renewable energy, electricity and water, urban developments and housing, health care, education, transport, and tourism. Well, there's a lot of unique contribution that uh, uh, come to the to Kuwait favors. For example, the geographic location to Kuwait, to the north of Kuwait, is a huge emerging market such as Iraq and Iran. To the south of Kuwait is the GCC uh, countries. Um, Kuwait enjoy a very long democratic uh, regime. Uh, Kuwait have one of the most highly educated youth in the regions. We have a very strong uh, sounding uh, banking system. We have a very transparent and accountable legal systems. Confident of the product it has to offer investors, Kuwait now needs to spread the word globally. In addition to going out to market with a series of international road shows, Kuwaiti investment promotion officials are also hosting prospective investors in country. The second edition of the Kuwait Investment Forum, held here in Kuwait City, is showcasing more than 70 billion pounds in potential investment opportunities and unveiling several new deals in high growth sectors. But for Kuwait, the FDI focus is on high quality investments. As the country is not in a position to be desperate for capital, the point is more on adding value and assisting the transition to a knowledge economy. We may basically focus on uh, investment that help us to attract new technologies, innovations, and bring an added value investment to the, Ku to the Kuwait economies and uh, create job opportunities for the Kuwaitis. Uh, it's more of quality of quantities. So we are looking for investors that can help us to fulfill our uh, criteria. Value-added FDI flows into Kuwait increased in the past two years, according to the Investment Promotion Authority. A new investment announced during the Kuwait Investment Forum is exactly the type the country wants to see more of. Timothy Keating, Executive Vice President of Government Operations for aerospace giant Boeing, said the company plans to open a permanent office in Kuwait this year to serve the growing demand for pilot training in the region. This should help put Kuwait on the radar of other U.S.-based multinationals. We see tremendous growth potential, uh, and one evidence of that is the fact that last year, in 2017, U.S. exports to Kuwait more than doubled. There are very few places in the world right now where U.S. exports are more than doubling every year. That's something that should get the attention of American producers and people who care about American jobs. I think it's attributable to a lot of different things, uh, growth in services, growth in tourism, uh, probably more than anything else, uh, purchase of airplanes from the United States, particularly from Boeing and the state of Washington, which incidentally was the number one exporting state to the Arab world. In total, the Investment Promotion Authority says it has attracted more than $2 billion in foreign investment since its creation in 2013. Data from investment monitor FDI Markets shows that top sectors for greenfield investment into Kuwait are real estate, hotels and tourism, and business and financial services. Kuwait has a sound and stable banking system, something that is seen as a key building block for the country's ambition to become a major financial center. The Kuwait Stock Exchange is being revamped in an effort to make it more attractive to foreign investors. This comes amidst a pickup in equity capital market deals and efforts of the government to privatize state-controlled assets. Kuwait's ambitions go beyond just financial services, though, and are set also on being a commercial and logistics hub. Central to this is a large-scale development plan for the north of the country. The northern region, historically, has always been a connecting hub. Uh, one of the major islands in that region is Feilecha or as we say Feilecha, 
It has served as an international hub since the Bronze Age. It is a place where civilizations have met, resided, traded, and uh, visited. And that is our aim for the future. It will be a place where we connect the world together just because of the location. The location is in the heart of the world. We have our neighbors next to us, great markets. Investors can access those markets. We can offer so much more to investors than what is presently available through that northern region. Today we talk about the vision and the cornerstone of that vision. It's the Northern Gulf Getaway. We are going to create uh, many of uh, new jobs which needed for the future. But in addition to that, we are seeing an opportunity which also we're going to link the south with the north via Kuwait. So the location of Kuwait, uh, it's extremely important. It's extremely advantageous for the country, but not for the country itself, because this vision is not a Kuwaiti vision. It's a global vision where you're going to connect the south with north, but also a south-south cooperation. Upgrading infrastructure is key to the Northern Development Plan and the wider national vision. Planned infrastructure projects include power plants, refineries, a new airport terminal, railroads, as well as new housing and real estate developments, and even whole new multi-use cities. Public-private partnerships are being utilized to drive infrastructure investment and to support other large projects. PPPs are a new tool for Kuwait after a rigorous framework for them was established in very recent years. Kuwait is the, I, could, I would say, the only country who has the set, full setup for the PPP. What I mean by the full setup, all the single details of how you launch the uh, PPP projects and what is the required steps from legal perspective and even financial perspective has been described clearly in the law. This framework so far seems to be proving attractive to foreign investors. Foreign and uh, regional and local investors has been shown uh, a huge appetite to participate in the PPP projects. This is, I believe, related that of the uh, PPP project has been presented to them, well studied, and uh, the risk distribution, distribution between the owner of the projects from the public sector and the investors has been built on a fair, a fair base. Uh, and uh, the solvency of the state of Kuwait and the ability to meet the liabilities in the uh, long term, which is, has been certified by international uh, agencies, uh, attracting uh, the market in Kuwait for the uh, investors locally and uh, international. Apart from the need to bring in outside investment and expertise, homegrown enterprises are being recognized as an important driver of diversification as well. SMEs are the backbone of any economy. And, and that's one thing we here in Kuwait have a lot of focus on. And if you look at His Highness the Emir, has given close to $7 billion grant to fund SMEs here. So, you know, we're putting our money where our mouth is. And, uh, and, and now one of the important me measures that, that we're doing is changing the, the legal environment to allow more people to, to make those, take that leap. And Kuwait has had a great track record of not only young entrepreneurs being successful in starting up a business, but also exiting them. And we've created many new millionaires here by people taking their, their, their these, these young companies and, and taking them to fruition and, and, uh, and, and, and monetizing those, those gains. And that's, that's the basis of, of innovation. And that's how we see innovation happen in lots of countries. We need to see more of it here, uh, but, but it's something that, that's happened quite a bit of. With 65% of the population being under the age of 30, Kuwait's young demographics lend themselves to having an attractive consumer base and workforce for a growing private sector, the latter being contingent on skills being enhanced. Under the national vision, education is to be more aligned with the labor market and the needs of companies. The corporate sector is also doing its part. Our chamber has a program that we call the Professional Development Initiative. It allows Kuwaiti graduates of American universities to work for one year with U.S. companies. Companies like Boeing and Dow and GE and Intel and others have the benefit of working with these young Kuwaitis. Basically, it's like a test drive for a year. If they like what they see, they get to hire them and bring them back to work in Kuwait. And so far, it's working out really well. 
This type of collaboration will be key to Kuwait achieving its ambitious national vision, for which the clock is ticking. We didn't move. We haven't moved as fast as, as some of our neighbors, but uh, steady she goes. <laughs> you know, we're we're there. We're going to be there for for, for many years to come uh, because I, I think we, we take we take a conservative approach to things, but that conservatism allows us also to be very stable. It's an ambitious vision, but I tell you this, we've been, uh, as Kuwait, we have uh, many successful stories. And I think uh, from now until this vision, there is many milestones. Every, every and each milestone we can accomplish is a, a milestone would be uh, a successful on this path. And, uh, and it would take us to a different level and a different layer uh, and towards this goal. And uh, uh, we are willing to revisit our vision and revisit the tools of that vision in order to make sure that it's a, it's a successful, uh, uh, a vision would be a successful plan. We are a nation that's been tested and once and time again, politically and economically. We have seen so many uh, uh, changes in, in the economy and we have prevailed every single time. There's a lot of opportunities available in Kuwait. Uh, there's a lot of things and changes is happening in Kuwait and there's a good time now to come and invest in Kuwait to explore all the opportunities available uh, and help you to expand your business internationally uh, by using Kuwait as a springboard, as a hub to reach other uh, country in the region. The Kuwait 2035 roadmap is a long road, but it's a path the government is committed to continuing. And with every deliberate step, the country gets a bit closer to the new Kuwait that is envisioned as the end goal. Foreign companies can both support and profit from this transition. We hope you've enjoyed this look at what some of those opportunities entail. Join me next time to see where we go on location.